Welcome. Welcome all the folk from St. Paul's. And I'm seeing some people here from St. Paul's who have been back to St. Paul's since I was last there. So welcome. I, you know who I'm talking to and some of you who have not seen at St. Paul's uh, for a while. So it's lovely to see you here at Doxy. Uh, lovely to welcome those on Zoom. Lovely to welcome those on YouTube. And we have a joint service this morning because it is a key, a key date for us, a key milestone. We have been privileged to have had Alison Thomas and Derek with us for the last 20 months. They came on the 15th of October uh, and was, uh, was it licensing? It was, a, was it, what was it? It was a licensing, wasn't it? It was a, you forget to say, licensing at St Paul's. And here we are saying farewell as Alison moves on. It's been wonderful to have you here. And of course, that will be, that thought will be in our mind through this service. We will focus on those aspects of this morning towards the end of our service. It's a sad time because it's been lovely having you here. Uh, we are grateful for all you've brought and we do wish you a, a great blessing as you move from here. But we will be saying that again at the end because that's very much in our hearts throughout this morning. Uh, so thank you for all for coming to mark this significant day. I just want to mention that in two weeks time, there is another joint service, this time at St Paul's. Ian will be ordained priest on the 22nd, that's the Tuesday at St Mary's, and the following Sunday, the 27th, 10.30 at St Paul's, he will be officiating at communion for the first time. So um, please do put that in your diaries and book with Jackie if you haven't already done so. Um, and just a reminder that Doxy Folk there will be no service here that week. That's two weeks' time, there'll be no service on the morning. Or oh, the service will be at St Paul, so there is a service but at St Paul. Um, I also want to take this opportunity to thank all of you who have sent me best wishes and prayers and all those sorts of aspects in relation to my bell palsy. You can tell it is still there. Um, I am uh, just a kind of brief update. I am still pretty exhausted with it. I'm sleeping in the afternoons. And I'm just wondering about going back to GP this week ahead. So watch this space. Um, but thank you very much for all your concern and for your support. Now, I do have, I do have some bands of marriage to publish. So I publish the bands of marriage between Scott Stephen Warner and Nicola Claire Sanley. If any of you know cause or just impediment why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it. This is for the third time of asking. They are both resident in this parish. Um, so if any of you know a just reason in law why they should not get married, now is the time to speak. It's such a relief. We do talk about it at college, but I've never had to um, deal with that situation, so that's good. Well, let me pray for them. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Scott and for Nicola. And we thank you for their love for each other. And we pray for them as they grow together even more in love. And we pray for them in the preparation for their marriage. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. What a wonderful selection of songs and hymns we have this morning. My thanks to all those who have recorded throughout the last, oh, however many months it is, 18 months or so. It's been lovely. 15 months, I guess, but it's been lovely to have so many to choose from. This one is All Are Welcome, and what a wonderful message that is. So please, I'm sorry you can't stand and sing, but you can stand and sing at home if you wish, but do sing it in your heart, sing it in your mind. So let's just build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. Jeff, thank you.
Yet the cross shall stand as witness and a symbol of God's grace. Here as one we claim the faith of Jesus. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where love is found in water, wine and wheat. A banquet hall on holy ground where peace and justice meet. If the love of God through Jesus is revealed in time and space, as we share in Christ the us all welcome, all welcome in this place. Turning to our order of service, I'm beginning at page two, the prayer of preparation. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As you are able, would you please stand as we say the Gloria. We say together, glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the collect for this second Sunday after Trinity. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. 
send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that mo most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Would you please be seated as I invite Jacqueline for today's first reading. A reading from St Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 5, beginning at verse 14. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Again, as you are able, would you please stand up and invite uh, Ruth forward to read the gospel. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. He also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Do please take a seat. It's lovely to see so many of you here today. I look at all these faces, and I can still recognise you behind the masks. And it brings back so many happy memories of the last 20 months, uh, which have been nothing short of eventful. Um, so I'm going to start by going slightly off piste with, with somebody you might not recognise necessarily as a theologian, and that's the uh, DJ Fatboy Slim. Um, he had a hit in the early 2000s, and I can't remember the title of the record, but the lyric was, we've come a long, long way together through the hard times and the good. I need to celebrate you, baby. I need to praise you like I should. And I think if we alter the words slightly, 
throughout all this time, we have carried on praising God. We've carried on celebrating. And we've carried on, I guess, supporting each other through that celebration. That I've just been struck by how much everybody has looked for the silver linings. How we've stayed together as a united community of two churches. How we have continued to praise and to celebrate God. We've come a long, long way together through hard times and good. And in doing that, we're treading in the path of the saints and the disciples throughout the ages. Following God, praising God in the best of times and the worst of times. And so we start to look at today's Bible readings. And I was struck with the one from Mark about the leap of faith in the everyday things of life. Someone scattering seed on the ground. Something everybody would have been familiar with in that community, an everyday sight of villagers working in fields. We're more, most of us, with some ex farming exceptions, are at one remove from that these days. We see the results of the seed scattered on the ground in the baker's shop or the supermarket. We're not directly concerned with it, most of us. But there is that faith of sowing seed, not quite sure if it's going to come up, particularly with Paul and his butternut squashes this year. Uh, sometimes not quite sure what's going to come up. You're not sure what you planted where. And that means life's full of surprises and of waiting and sometimes of just being patient and let things happen in God's own good time, which may not be our time. Again, that's something for this last year or so that uh, I've, I've been underfoot rather longer than we planned for because a pandemic got in the way of jobs being advertised. But then, you know, eventually God finds a way through. Things happen, things move on new opportunities develop. The seeds sown, it takes a long time to germinate. And as I probably told you when I first arrived here, um, you never know when you throw that seed out what's going to germinate and how. Because my own story is of not growing up religious or from a religious family, the two of us being invited to a baptism at St. Mary's and God finally having got me where he wanted me and said, right, you know, I've got plans for you. I didn't expect it, didn't plan for any of it, but that was the start of feeling something at work in that place, feeling the Holy Spirit at work, feeling that I was coming home. And that seed was sown and here I am now. And that's not just proof of God's plan. It's also yet more ample proof that God does have a sense of humour. Because none of this was, was expected. And we find things growing that we didn't expect to grow, didn't plant. The example of the mustard seed. The smallest of all seeds. If you use mustard seeds in cooking at all or pickle making, you know they are pretty tiny. And Jesus says it grows into a shrub that's big enough for birds to get in there and hide, make nests in its shade. The tiny thing that grows and becomes a sanctuary for God's good creation. And who knows what seeds we might be sowing in our daily lives. In what I've heard referred to as our baptismal ministry. That when we're baptised as Christians, it's not about joining a club. It's about being given a commission. 
to go out to share that joy and that love and that good news. As Paul puts it, the love of Christ urges us on. We haven't just ticked a box. We're called to do something with this faith, to take it forward, to share as Jesus shared, to share as we'll share in the Eucharist, in Jesus' body and blood and in his love, his love for us. And to share the news of what Paul calls a new creation, that everything has become new. We're not the people we were. We're not yet the people we'll become. We're in this process of change and development, following where Jesus leads us into all sorts of surprising places. And Jesus gives us the strength to carry on with that journey, to keep surprising ourselves, to keep doing new things. It's amazing, really. It takes a motley bunch of human beings and we suddenly realise we are all loved. We are all held and cherished and supported in God's love. And we have ties that bind us together. Ties that bind us with all of humanity as we are impelled out to share that love. To sow those seeds. So... We're equipped to go out as ambassadors for Christ, as Paul puts it. And you may think of ambassadors as quite learned people going off to conduct international diplomacy while passing round the Ferrero Rocher. But we're a different kind of ambassadors. We're saying, we're pointing to something that's beyond us. Because we may be a motley crew of fallible, sinful humanity. We may be the people who keep on making mistakes and muddle through and cope as we best can with difficult circumstances. But the Bible's shown us again and again that God picks the most unlikely people in the strangest circumstances to go and do his work. The Bible is full of people who are very far from being role models. But God takes them by the scruff of the neck and says, you'll do. I've got a job for you. And quite often they're quite gobsmacked about it. Quite often, like in the case of Jonah, they run away very determinedly in the opposite direction. But God finds them and brings them back and asks them to keep going. And quickly, because I don't want to go too long, it reminds me of something that Martin Luther said about baptism, thinking about our baptismal ministry to go out and be Christians. And he said that baptism is like an unsinkable boat that carries us through life. And that there are times when we're in very choppy waters. We're at times when we may, rather like Jonah, be attempting to swim off in the opposite direction. But that boat is still there bobbing along, offering us the chance to climb back aboard, keep going, keep spreading God's love, keep spreading the sea. And that's what I'm going to do in Basford on Wolstanton to communities on the fringes of Newcastle and the Lyme, to churches with lots of challenges like everywhere, lots of opportunities like everywhere, carrying on, sowing the seeds, waiting to see what God's going to turn up, what God is going to help to flourish. And my prayers stay with you all and the lovely times we've had together. And I pray for your success too, as sowers and farmers and gardeners, as you nurture each other, 
nurture our communities here in Doxy and Forge. Reach out that language of love to all the other causes that the two churches support in this country and around the world. To the glory of God. Amen. Thank you, Alison, for those words. And I think the song, what we're going to listen to next, really echoes those words. Abba Father, let me be yours and yours alone. This is that crop, this is that harvest coming to fruit, coming to fruition. So we listen to our next hymn, which is Abba Father. Beautiful song and it's hard not to sing, isn't it? Let's hope and keep our fingers crossed for Boris's announcement tomorrow. If you are able, would you stand as we affirm our faith in the words of the Creed? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Would you please be seated as I invite Jenny forward for our intercessions. We start with a prayer of thanksgiving. Heavenly Father, 
We praise and thank you that through Jesus' death and resurrection, we can be reconciled and made new. We praise you for your abundant love and grace for all humanity, bringing hope, healing, and wholeness today. Amen. In our prayers of intercession, to the words, Lord, hear us. Please respond, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, Hear us, Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for your justice, your peace and reconciliation in so many countries around the world, blighted by conflict, famine, suffering and hopelessness. We pray particularly for the people of Myanmar, Eastern Ukraine, for a lasting peace between Israel and the Palestinians, for the people of Syria, that they may have the chance to rebuild their lives and towns and live without fear. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, we pray for the discussions on this final day of the G7 summit. We pray for bold, practical commitments to tackle climate change and injustice as we rebuild from the pandemic. Lord, we know there will still be much more to be done. We pray for the leaders to build on the decisions made and turning talk into action, especially the donation of vaccine to poorer countries. We pray for humility, compassion, and collaboration in the important months ahead as we look to the global climate talks in November. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, we pray for our government and all those involved in making decisions about the way forward out of the COVID restrictions and whether to extend the final lifting of lockdown. We pray too that the government will have greater compassion with struggling countries and reverse its decision to drastically cut the foreign aid budget. May we be governed by integrity, truth, compassion, and wisdom for the benefit of the whole country and beyond. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, we thank you for the hard work and dedication of the scientists who developed the different vaccines. We pray for the people who are now researching into the spread of the virus to understand its effects and help identify new treatments and vaccines and give us hope for the future. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, we pray for all those we know who are unwell, undergoing treatment, or finding a return to normality challenging after a long period of isolation. And in a few moments now, I invite you just to bring to the Lord those that you know who need our prayers. Lord, may you bring healing of mind, body and spirit. Lord, hear us. 
Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, we pray for everyone affected by long COVID and for the many people who are still on the waiting lists for hospital treatments and appointments. We lift to you the many departments, consultants and staff as they deal with the huge backlog. May we all have strength and patience. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And finally, a prayer given to us by St. Basil of Caesarea. O Lord of the helpless, the hope of the hopeless, the saviour of the storm-tossed, the harbour of voyagers, the physician of the sick, we pray to you. O Lord, you know each of us and our petitions. You know each house and its needs. Receive us into your kingdom. Make us children of light and bestow your peace and love upon us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As you'll know, we're still doing a virtual piece, but if you're in a household together, you do have my permission to hug at the appropriate moment. God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. As we continue sharing the peace, we can listen to our next hymn. And this is the, in some ways, seeking, seeking those green shoots, them green shoots of God's kingdom. So it's seek ye first the kingdom of God.
using Eucharistic Prayer G, which is on page 35 in your red books. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels, and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, 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 holy Lord, 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 How wonderful the work of your hands. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace the people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained sinless. From them, you raised up Jesus, our Savior, born of men, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sins, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms upon the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave them thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking a cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at last with St. Thomas, St. Andrew, St. Paul, and all the saints to the vision of that eternal strength for which you have created us through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom, with whom, and in you, with all who stand before you in earth and we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting grace. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. As our Saviour taught us, so we Our Father, Father of the people, your kingdom come, your will be on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread.
to share in the body of Christ. Because we all share in one heart. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his son. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be. Say together, most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to be the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, brought the crumb sandwich and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and heal us with the precious body and blood of your son. Let me know the us and be in him. And let me, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. The body of Christ, keep us in eternal life. <coughs> the blood of Christ, keep us in eternal life. As usual, I will put on a clean mask, sanitize my hands again, and bring the communion wafers to you where you're sitting. As a lot of you here today, do nudge me if I inadvertently miss you. It's happened before with Sheila knows. <laughs> Loving Father, we thank you for feeding us at the supper of yours. Sustain us with your spirit, that we may serve you here on earth until our joy is complete in heaven and we share in the eternal banquet with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray together on page 16. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be in the living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live our word to your praise and Lord. Amen. We must have timed exactly how many people are going to be here because if you notice the communion music finished just as Alison was coming up. <laughs> as if we knew how many people were going to be, it was perfect. Yes, we're going to listen to our next hymn, which is I Cannot Tell. Oh, 
Well, we've come to that point in the order of service that was sent round to folk at home that says we are going to mark the leaving of Alison and Beric. And we just couldn't, I just couldn't quite think of the right word to use. And I just thought mark is kind of identifying it because there is just so much that's kind of tied up in this. There's thanks, there's uh, blessing you as you move forward. There's all these different things. There's a sadness too. Uh, but uh, as we mark this, I'd like to invite the two of you to stand because it's been great to have you with us for these 20 months. And the first thing that we're going to do, I'm going to invite a representative from each church to come forward. Uh, there's a card from each church to hand over and some words of, well, some words for each of you. So Jenny and Vivian, if you'd like to come forward, please. While you've been here, you've achieved quite a few firsts. You were our first curate, in my memory, at St Paul's. Our first lady curate, although we have had lady lay readers in the past. The first to introduce us to Celtic worship. The first curate to make jam, and very delicious it was too. <laughs> um, first curate to make knitted decorations for the church garden. And now, just a few things that people have thanked you for in this card. Uplifting joy and worship. Tremendous source of light and joy. Sharing new forms of worship. Meaningful reflections in the newsletter. Thank you also for your ministry at St Joseph's Convent. Your leadership of some of the home groups your participation in our craft group. And now a little bit about the places where you are going. When I worked in the potteries many years ago, I used to drive home via Basford Bank, where there were always traffic jams. That's what I remember of Basford. Nowadays, it's known chiefly for being the home of the New Vic Theatre and also the pub, the Light Picker. Now, Wool Stanton will always remind me of another pub, a lovely pub where 
I discovered braised steak and chips with gravy. Seriously though, our loss is their gain, Alison, but the picture of you I will always have in my mind is of your YouTube setting in front of your lovely blue curtains with a simple cross and candle. So Alison, thank you for everything that you've done for St Paul's and for Doxy. We wish you well. You will always occupy a special place in our hearts. Our loss will be Busford and Wolf Danton's game. Well, I have the hard job now. How do I follow on from that? What more can I say that Vivian hasn't said already? You've given us so much, touched our lives in so many different ways. You were about to start a new ministry in Newcastle. Well, Bill and I spent 10 very interesting years in a parish not too far away from Basford and Wolstanton. So we got to know it quite well. Um, you will enjoy living there. Um, and as you get to know the people there, we pray that you will have a fruitful ministry through all the challenges that lie ahead. I mean, apart from anything else, you will have the biggest Marks and Spencers in the region, <laughs> down the road. For any of you who visited the one at all Stanton. So we wish you to look forward to all that lies ahead and go with our blessing and with our love. Thank you. I want to encourage you to hand over the card. I may encourage you to do that. And then it's, it's, my, it's my pleasure to um, just to pass over some things from all of us, uh, some things from all of us to the pair of you uh, as kind of marking this step forward in your journey. Um, as you both referenced, uh, St. Mark's Basford and St. Margaret's Austanton. And uh, I'm, I've already replied, yes, I'm coming to your licensing uh, on the 29th of June. And what a, what a celebration that will be as well. So we, we fasten these with our we fasten these with our thanks and with our blessing, and uh, we do say that we will miss you, and we hope that you will remember us as you. Um... There we go, and I'm going to encourage you to open them now so that people can see. Excuse me, what people can see, and just while you do that, there is also. An envelope in which there is something you will be able to use to choose uh, something that you might be able to get that will remember us, that will bless you, and will say thank you to you from us. So I'll maybe pass that one to Derek as well. Derek, can I encourage you to open the other box at the same time? And then those at home won't be waiting forever just to see what's coming. I, I know some of you know, I guess. But, uh, just go for it, go for it. Do you, Alice, I'm going to move on towards the screen and then people can um, just see that at home. <laughs> 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 Bubble wrap. What I always wanted, I love bubble wrap. <laughs> and even better, it's got something inside it. There we are. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. <laughs> That's gorgeous. Thank you so much. <laughs> Lovely. And I was just to see what, what the other present is. I'm going to have to read that.
<laughs> Some very lovely wine glasses. And I think this is about being uh, hospitable. Jesus, Jesus was a great one for eating and drinking with people and having a party. In fact, as I've told you before, one of my favourite little theology books is called Eating Your Way Through Luke's Gospel. <laughs> so I will raise a toast to you all and uh, carry on some Christian hospitality. Thank you. And I'm, I've already said thank you to everybody in, in my, my sermon or reflection and just to say thank you again for the warmth of your welcome. Thank you to Martin and Ian and Wardens and PCC and everybody else, which is in fact is all of you that contributes to the, the life of these two churches. Thank you for putting up with somebody from a different tradition <laughs> and navigating the different ways in which we approach the table and whether you call it a table or an altar. And uh, we've had fun, haven't we? And yes, it's been a joyous time. <laughs> and my prayers are with you that our joy in following Christ will continue and buoy us up and keep us all going as we follow his paths. We would also, we would also love to pray for you and if you feel able, I'd like to invite you to stand as we pray for Alison and Derek. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we do thank you for Alison and for Derek, and we thank you for all that they have brought to us over these last 20 months. We thank you for their ministry, and we thank you for them, and we pray for them as they move from here, as they move to a new vicarage, when that's ready, as they move to a new place, as they new, do a new, new ministry. We ask your blessing on them, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, all please do sit down. And Alison, I've just got something here, three little things stuck together, which you can open later, but they're my thanks as incumbent to you as curate. It's been lovely to have a fellow clergy colleague, and I want to thank you so much for continuing to engage with everything after, you know, there were whatever number of months it was, eight months when you were hoping to move on, but you still continued to be involved. And I know, because I look back to this last week, there's a number of emails that say, your wisdom, please. And that is something that you've brought, and I want to thank you for that. And you've already made reference to our different churchmanship, but it's been wonderful having you here, having your different points of view, your different uh, wisdom and all that. You brought that and we do thank you very much for that. So that's for me as a personal thank you to you. But I'm, I'm sure that what I'm saying is echoed by lots of other folk as well. So thank you very much. Thank you. We're going to listen to Guide Me, O Thy Great Redeemer in a moment. And then I'm going to invite Alison to say the words of blessing and to dismiss us. And when she dismisses us, I want to encourage that we socially distance, but that we move outside and you take your song sheet with you and we will sing, Oh, guide me, O oh, thy great redeemer, outside. And the way that I'm going to encourage you to do that, I want to ask the people who are in the hall, if you go out through the KFC room, and through the double doors at the back. And the people in the worship space, they go out that way. And then we won't trip up so much over each other. We'll be able to stay our two meters distance. And when you're outside, I do need to remind you that we need to uh, be remembering we're there to worship, but it's not a big social huddle. But I'm guessing you'll all want to talk to Alison. So just be sensible and be wise about that. Um, uh, but it'll be lovely to sing outside. And Jeff wants to encourage uh, how do I phrase this, Jeff? Uh, you want to encourage those who want to encourage you to stand beside you or near you to give a bit of a boost to the singing. Yeah? So, St. Paul's Choir, Doxy Singers, plus everybody else. Near Jeff, you'll be in that far corner. 
Is that all? Are we there? Is there anything else I need to say? Have I, have I said enough? Yeah, I've rubbed it on enough. Okay. So guide me, O thy great Redeemer. Guide me, O the great Redeemer, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me now and evermore. Feed me now and evermore. Open now the crystal fountain, whence the healing stream does flow. Let the fiery valley pillar lead me all my journey through. Strong deliverer, strong deliverer, be thou still my strength and shield. beginning and our end. Accompany us in this day's journey. Dawn on our darkness. Open our eyes to praise you for your creation and to see the work you set before us today. Take us and use us to bring to others the new life you give in Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.